Hi, good evening. My name is Andrew Jinks. I'm the uh, transportation engineer for the town of Vienna, and I want to welcome you to our meeting this evening, and thank you for attending and uh, showing your, um, your interest in the project. Tonight, we're going to be reviewing the proposed pedestrian improvements along Creek Crossing Roadway that is located both in the town of Vienna and Fairfax County. The southern section of uh, Creek Crossing Roadway is located in uh, the town of Vienna, and the northern section of Creek Crossing Roadway is located in Fairfax County. And the proposed improvements are both in, in both jurisdictions. The southern section that you see here is in the town of Vienna. That's the proposed improvements for the town of Vienna. And then the northern section that you see over here is the, um, the proposed improvements that are in uh, Fairfax County. And so this project is a joint venture or joint uh, project, both with Fairfax County and Town of Vienna. And we've got a few folks here this evening, um, Francesco and Mark from Fairfax County DOT, Fairfax County Department of Transportation, that are gonna be here to discuss uh, the county's portion of the project. Uh, next slide. I, I don't see the uh, presentation. Give us one moment. And yep, there. So tonight's purpose is to review with you, the residents, the um, proposed uh, project that we have along Creek Crossing. And then we're gonna provide an opportunity for question and answers. And then really the most important aspect of this evening is getting your official uh, feedback or comments or questions that you have a part of the project. And I'll go over uh, the various ways to do that later in the presentation. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that official feedback and the comments or questions that you have and utilize that as we go further into the, into the design phase. We'll review your various uh, questions and concerns and anything that we can include into the project, we will do so. We're also gonna go through and introduce the project team, uh, review the pod project background for, for this, uh, for Creek Crossing, review the two segments that are within the town and within Fairfax County, um, discuss the project schedule, We'll have a Q&A, and then we'll discuss the next steps. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, I'm the town's transportation engineer. I'm the PM on the town side, or the town aspect of the project. And with me this evening is Francesco Loretti from Fairfax County, who's the PM on the county side. Also joining us on, uh, on, on our Zoom call is our uh, design consultant, RDA. So Adam from RDA is gonna be here to answer any uh, technical questions that we have later on in the evening. Next slide, please. We also have a special guest here, and that's Supervisor Alcorn from the Hunter Mill District. He's a Fairfax County Supervisor, and he has mentioned that he's a few things to say for the project tonight, and so I'm gonna hand things over to him. Supervisor. Um, thank you very much, Andrew. Just uh, very briefly, um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Walter Alcorn. I'm your representative from the Hunter Mill District on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. And uh, I've been in this role for almost a year uh, now. So uh, I, I do wanna say I, I am very pleased to represent both um, the residents in the town of Vienna and also just outside the town here. So uh, this is all in the Hunter Mill District. Um, and I think this uh, uh, project is going forward as a model of town, county cooperation and collaboration. Uh, so I do look forward to hearing uh, folks' questions and comments tonight and uh, happy to be of assistance relating to this and other projects. Uh, folks should feel free to contact my office. Uh, also, uh, with me here tonight is Shamily Hauk, who uh, is in my office. So uh, for those of you that are on Zoom, if uh, you'd like to contact us, feel free uh, to do so this evening via chat. Uh, otherwise, uh, feel free to contact us uh, at the office. But thank you, Andrew. I'll let you get on with the program and look forward to hearing folks' comments tonight. 
Thank you very much, sir. Next slide, please. So the purpose of this project is to provide connectivity from Beulah Road to Old Courthouse Road. And we wanna provide um, connectivity that is going to meet all the various standards, uh, such as the standards that are within town, VDOT, the county, and ADA standards. The project is locally funded, and the facilities that are located in the town's portion of the project will be maintained by the town, and the improvements that are located in Fairfax County will be maintained by either VDOT or the county. Next slide, please. So segment A, which is the proposed project that's within uh, the town of Vienna, is the first one that we're gonna review this evening. Next slide. In the location map you see on your screen, um, segment A is the green line work uh, that's in the town of Vienna. You can also see the portion that's gonna be in uh, Fairfax County, just to give you an idea of where we're looking at and the areas that we're describing this evening. Okay, next slide. So in the town of Vienna, we're proposing 2,500 linear feet of street, streetscape improvement. That includes five foot, uh, wide, five foot wide concrete sidewalk on both sides of the roadway. There'll be cur curb and gutter installed. And uh, the new feature for, for this area is uh, on official on-street parking along the south side of the roadway. Uh, from my understanding, some unofficial on-street parking was taking a place along the north side uh, where the existing pedestrian uh, asphalt path was located. And so now what we're doing is we're providing official parking along the roadway and it'll be on the south side uh, along Creek Crossing Roadway. One thing we looked at when we were reviewing the design and getting started on the design was the alignment of the roadway and the best way to accommodate what we wanted to put in uh, into the project. And so after looking at the alignment, we shifted it a little bit to the north so that we could accommodate what we wanted to put in. And by doing that, we were able to avoid as much right away, permanent right away impacts as possible. And also we were able to help avoid any, not any, but most of the uh, property impacts such as trees, and uh, landscape features. Um, so we're really mindful about the uh, residents' properties and the different uh, aspects of the impacts as we we're going through the project, which is why we slightly shifted the alignment to the north. Next slide, please. You see on your screen the typical section that we're looking at um, is still gonna be a two-lane roadway, uh, but now we've introduced parking. And uh, in most sections, most areas of the roadway within the town is gonna to be curb and gutter. There is gonna be a small stretch of section where we've got a, where we have a shoulder. I'll get into that when we start looking into the boards, um, but that was to help mitigate uh, various impacts. Next slide, please. So here's the first segment that is in the town of Vienna. And you can see that the project begins at Bueller Road. And I've already received a few questions uh, regarding something that was supposed to be a part of this project. So I'd like to go ahead and just clarify that at this time. Uh, there was supposed to be a RRFB, a rectangular rapid flash beacon, as a part of this project at the intersection of Bueller and Creek Crossing. That, was, that came from um, our, our town's TSC, Transportation Safety Commission, a recommendation that came a few years ago to add an RRFB in this location. And originally we were going to have it as a part of this project, but since this project is not gonna be constructed for a few years from now, we wanted to include that uh, sooner than that. And so that's been taken out of this project and we'll be, uh, we're gonna be reviewing various funding sources to add that in before this project goes in. And so you can see here on the board, on the first section of this board, the, uh, that the alignment is still relatively close to where it, where it is today, but we did shift it up to the north. And again, that's to help with uh, property impacts. Next slide, please. So here you can see where we're starting to come back to the original alignment along Creek Crossing as we get close to the intersection of East Street. And um, yeah, so, so the, the impacts through here are not, were not quite as concerning to us since the alignment was in a good alignment through here. Next slide, please. So 
So a few things on this slide. Um, first, I would like to point out that since there is a culvert over here uh, along uh, where Wolf Trap Creek is crossing, we had to be mindful about the typical section through here for the uh, pedestrian improvements. And so that's why we went with a shoulder, shoulder section through here. And that's really just to help us avoid um, really impacting the culvert system that's there. The funding for this project really prevents us from making any major modifications to that culvert. And so we wanted to go with a section through here that would avoid those impacts. And then on, um, on, on the screen there, you see what I was describing a little bit before, an RRFB, and that's just simply a, uh, for the lack of a better term, a glorified pedestrian sign that has flashing lights that really helps draw the attention of drivers uh, to pedestrians. And so that's something that is gonna be part of this project um, when we get this constructed. Next slide, please. So since most, well actually everyone that's joining this meeting is joining via Zoom, we actually have no one in town hall. Um, so thank you, thank you for being safe and joining through Zoom. We wanna provide an image or a picture that zooms in on um, just an example area uh, of what we're proposing. And what you see there is the main aspect of the project, which is the sidewalk that's in orange shading. And then you see that wherever we impact a driveway with our project, we will provide a new driveway apron. And then um, where we impact the driveway itself, we will uh, have to uh, reconstruct a part of the driveway. And depending on what your driveway currently is, whether it's asphalt or concrete, we will place back uh, whatever, material, whatever uh, material is your driveway currently now. A uh, couple other things to point out in this image is the existing right-of-way, which is in the magenta or purple line work. And then also uh, the limits of cut and fill, which is really the limits of, of uh, the impact and where we're going to be uh, tying everything back in from the project and the tying into the existing ground. Uh, we'll be able to come back to this image if we have questions on this later during the Q&A section. Next slide, please. Okay, now I'm gonna hand things over to Francesco Loretti from Fairfax County DOT, who's gonna discuss the proposed improvements within the county section. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Hi, my name is Francesco Loretti, and I work for Fairfax County DOT, and I'm the P DOT project manager for this project. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is the location map, as you can see on the Blue line, that's the county portion of the project, and we're actually going from Miller Lane up to Old Courthouse Road. Uh, next slide, please. The uh, design features for this project include about approximately 1,650 feet of streetscape improvements. Uh, the north side is getting a five-foot sidewalk, and the south side is getting a six-foot maintaining one side um, at all times and the curb, installing curb and gutter along the south side, which currently is a uh, drainage section, drainage ditch section at this moment. And we're providing some connectivity from Miller Lane to Old Courthouse along both sides of the road so people can access the uh, town all the way out to Old Courthouse Road. Next slide, please. The typical section for this one it will um, keep the parking as, as is. We're providing curb and gutter on both sides and providing um, a four foot buffer per VDOT standards, which is what we have to design to within the county section of the project. As you can see, uh, the one side is getting a five foot sidewalk, the other side is getting a six, and um, we're still maintaining the through lanes and the parking as I mentioned before. Next slide, please. Um, and here we get into the actual design of the project. Uh, as you can see, it's a little hard to see because it's a small, small view, but there's a dash, red dash line, which is the cut and fill limits, which is the limits of the project on either side of the project. And we're maintaining um, as much as possible the, the, uh, the, the land as we can. Um, as you can see, we're gonna re replace the driveways as needed based on where we're putting the sidewalk. There are segments of the existing trail or slash sidewalk which are not connected in a straight line, so we're gonna replace those. 
And in doing that, we're actually going to be placing um, the, uh, we're going to make it more straight, which will mean that all the driveways that are impacted, as you can see in blue there, are going to need to be redone. So some are longer than others based on the fact that on the ones on the south side, the, the, the slope is a little greater to try and catch the grade based on where we're putting the, the new sidewalk. And the, the north side has segments which exist, which we're not going to be actually touching, but we're just connecting in between the spots. Um, next slide, please. And here it shows the continuation of the work along the south side. Uh, most of the north side is already complete in this, in this case, so we're not actually touching too much on that side. And we are planning on doing some, some driveway work as shown there, uh, curb and gutter being placed all on the edge there and providing, uh, up, repaving the road there as well, as you can see in the tan shading on the, on the, ma on the map. And right at the, at the intersection of Old Courthouse and uh, Creek Crossing, we're planning on doing some, um, an improvement for the pedestrian crossing. Uh, at this time, it's still being designed as to what the final ultimate condition will be, but there is a planned improvement to be placed there. And um, I'll turn it back to Andrew, and thank you very much. Thank you, Francesca. So the project schedule, there's a few things I'd like to point out. Um, first, tonight's meeting, uh, December 2nd. Uh, two weeks from now, or within the next two weeks, we'd like to get any and all of your um, official comments that you have. And again, I'm going to be reviewing all the various ways to provide uh, comments uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, and then to look ahead, uh, we're going to be submitting our final plans December of next year. Now, the reason why there's an extended amount of time between now and the uh, official submission of the final plans is we've got to go through the right-of-way process, and that can take time uh, where we talk to really in the individual landowners and property owners about the project. Uh, so uh, there is some time that's required for that process, and that's why the final plans will not be uh, submitted until um, December of next year. And then the project construction, um, we're hoping to get started in fall of 2022, which would mean that it would wrap up um, and complete construction in summer of 2023. Now, one, one major aspect I want to mention about the um, project schedule is that the project is currently, f the, the design of the project is fully funded and the construction of the project is, is uh, partially funded. We are going to need to to continue the design process and develop our cost estimate. And once we do that, we'll be able to see exactly how much we need for construction to see if we do need or how much funds we need more um, for the construction aspect of the project. So um, we don't anticipate this being a major issue, but it is not uh, official at this point. We don't have the project fully funded for construction at this point but we don't anticipate this being a major issue and the project schedule that you see in front of you is the one that we are going with at this point and the one that we are hopeful for. Uh, next slide, please. So now, now's the time um, for the residents. If you have any questions, um, we'd really like to hear from you. Uh, I did get one through email um, uh, right before the meeting started, so I'll, I'll start off answering those questions. But if you have a question, I, I believe they can raise their hands, is that correct, Charles? And we'll promote you to be able to speak uh, and provide your question through Zoom. Um, so let me start things off by answering the question that I received uh, from the, uh, before the meeting started. And that was uh, if the existing asphalt path will be uh, will remain or be demoed, and the existing asphalt path will, will be demoed. There will no longer be that asphalt path that's currently out there. Uh, the other question I got was, who is responsible for moving the mailboxes? And that will be the, the contractor. The contractor for the project, when we hire them and um, have them on board, is going to be responsible for shifting and moving the mailbox. That will not be the resident's responsibility. Um, so Charles, is there any questions so far? Yes, give me one second. Sure, no problem. Um, panelists, I'm going to unmute you all. Could you make sure that your computer volume is down? Therefore, we don't have any feedback. Um, some of that will come through.
during this section if your computer volume is up. So um, don't worry, we can all hear you guys. You should be just fine. Um, the first question we have comes from um, Charles. Go ahead, Charles. Okay, go ahead, Charles. Um, Charles, your, your audio doesn't seem to be coming through at all. If you wanna check your microphone, I'm gonna put you on mute um, and we'll come back to you. Uh, the next question is from Ray. Good evening. Uh, I have two interests. One is at the uh, where Wolf Trap Creek crosses Creek Crossing. There is a pedestrian path across that connects uh, the two parks. And it's almost a blind turn when people come down the road. Is there any improvement there to make it easier for uh, cars to see pedestrians crossing roads besides the flashing lights? So the RRFP, the, fla the flashing light signal that you're mentioning, will really help that aspect. Um, we can include signage beforehand, advance warning signage, uh, uh, so that uh, any vehicles that are coming up to that crosswalk will be able to see the um, see that there is a pedestrian crossing there, but the RFB will be a, a significant improvement for that crossing. Is there is there a sidewalk on the, I guess it's the south side of the road there where there is there is no sidewalk now. It, yes, so sidewalk. that the weeds that overgrow do not block the line of sight of the cars. Yes, yeah, sidewalk is proposed on both sides of the roadway through there. Okay, thank you. Sure, thank you. The next question is from Bob Robertson. Bob, if you can unmute your mic. Okay, we'll move on. There you oh, there you can, you, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. I'm at 515, and if you look at your, on your map, it's quite narrow. The ro Creek Crossing Road is quite narrow through there. I don't see how it's possible to add 5 plus 5 or 10 feet of sidewalk on both sides without, A, taking down my trees, and B, taking down the trees on the other side of the road that gives the road a kind of a relatively bucolic character. Are all the trees gonna be mowed down to, to put this sidewalk in on both sides of the road? So no, not all trees are gonna be um, removed, but any trees that you see within that green shading which is the um, cut and fill line or the limits of disturbance, will most likely um, be impacted, um, especially for the portion in the town, we are going to have our town arborist come out to take a look at those trees and to see if that there's any possibility that some of those could remain with the project. And that's something that'll come later on in the design process. But I, wouldn't wanna, I don't wanna say that all those trees are going to come down. Well, can, can I, yeah, it's, it's just going on a Zoom thing here, looking at this thing visually, it's very hard for me to visualize what will be taken out and what will survive. Um, I, if my mature um, trees are, are gonna be taken down, I have grave concerns about this. I, I had no idea that the sidewalks were gonna be on both sides of the road. I assumed it was only gonna be a replacement for the um, 
for the asphalt walkway. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, is, is there going to be an opportunity to get more specific or hands-on look at what the actual impact on my property will be? Because right now, it's just from that one little quick glance at, at your uh, schematic there, I have no idea how, exactly what the impact's going to be. Absolutely. So this is only 30% design. Um, so we wanted to come to the residents and present this 30% design, the preliminary engineering of this. Uh, so we're going to continue the design process, and that's when we really start to look at what the impacts are, and so what trees will have to go and what trees are able to stay. So, yeah, we're, we're not at that point yet where we can give a definitive answer on what can stay and what can go. Um, so there is some time still, and there will be still uh, opportunities to have conversations with you to discuss that. And, and, and it won't be one of these situations. I'm, I'm familiar with these projects, and usually by the time you're asking the specific questions, it's too late to, to make any impact. Well, and, and this and is you why... assure me I will have an opportunity to make something before all the decisions are practically made? Sure. So so I can, I can be in communication with you um, before we continue on with the final design project and, and after we get all the different um, feedback from tonight, and we can have a, a detailed discussion about this and how it's going to impact your property. Thank you. And one final thing, there are culverts that run, drainage culverts that run underneath all the driveways on my, my on the um, odd number side of the road. Is that all going to be replaced too? Yes. So, so a part of the reason why this project came, came through and came about was due to some drainage concerns. Uh, in the area, and so drainage, uh, drainage structures and drainage facility, uh, drainage structures is a part of the proposed project. So yes, it'll no longer be the ditch section or the culverts going underneath the driveway. There's going to be curb and gutter um, along the roadway, which will accommodate um, the drainage aspect. Thank Adam, you, Andrew. I look forward to further specific discussions with you. Okay, very good. I'm looking forward to it. Adam, uh, was that the uh, an, a correct assessment from the drainage perspective? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, the uh, the ditch section will come out. The water from the property will drain to the roadway into the curb, the curb and gutter section. Um, and just to help reiterate your points from earlier, the final. As we advance the plans, we will identify the trees that will be impacted with a clear X so that when we are presenting to the property owners during the negotiation phase, we can clearly distinguish what trees are coming down, or we can look at evaluation for mitigating that impact with meandering of the sidewalk to try to save a couple of trees with and beat off the climates. Okay, thank you. Uh, Charles, was there more questions? Our next question comes from Susan. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Well, thank you all for having this meeting for all of us. I sure appreciate it. And thank you, Mr. Alcorn, for being present as well. And it's uh, we sure appreciate these opportunities to communicate before the machinery is out there. So thanks very much. Um, we live at the corner of Beulah and Creek Crossing. So our house is number 403 on your uh, map or your schematic. And um, the issue that confronts us, and let me say, as I say this, that we are thrilled about the improvements, the sidewalks. Um, we have seen, actually we've had a child hit uh, out here at our intersection and was injured and we see lots of horns honking. It's a really dangerous spot. So overall, we love this project. <laughs> Having said that, as a homeowner on the corner, we're concerned about a couple of things. Um, we have a fence that's actually only about seven feet from the current roadway and very mature trees and yew hedges which are important because our house is close to the road and actually the bedroom is very close to the road. So those mature hemlocks, uh, cedars, and the yew hedge really mean a lot to us. So because our house happens to be so close to the road, we're especially concerned about a five foot sidewalk and the green buffer. 
although in theory we love the idea of a sidewalk on our south side of the street. So I guess my question is, Andrew, do we just come to you personally and share our concerns about the width of the sidewalk, about the fact that our fence, we can tell already, would come down, that our mature trees would be taken? Do we just put it in writing in an email? How, how do we approach this? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna be discussing the various ways to comment um, at the end of this presentation after the Q&A section. But yeah, absolutely, you can send me an email. Um, there's a comment form on the website that you can access and you can put your comments in there. But um, any way that you wanna reach out to me, um, that, that's really in writing, that's what we'd like to have, so we have the official comments. Um, we can go off of that and then we can begin our discussion. That's helpful because we are concerned about it actually impacting the value of our property because we'll lose that greenscape that protects us, particularly because the bedroom and the, the wall of the house is so close to the street now. Sure. So thank you for that opportunity. We'll, we will avail ourselves of that. All right, thank you for joining us. We definitely do have um, a lot of people who wish to speak. So um, our next person who has our hand raised is uh, Ken Unger. How's that audio? Yes, can we, you hear can, me? we can hear yep, you. We can hear you. OK, great. I want to uh, second Susan's comment. I appreciate the opportunity to have a comment to the town and uh, Supervisor Elkhorn as well. So I am in the county portion of Creek Crossing, about four houses up from Miller, which is the end of the town. It's a fairly steep grade where the asphalt path is. And I'm real happy about getting rid of that asphalt path that's falling around. My question is, should homeowners expect some type of retaining wall since there's a fairly steep grade between the right of way and where the new curb and sidewalk will be uh, currently, no, we're not planning on doing any retaining walls through that section. Um, what you could expect to see is you're going to have a curb down next to the existing road. Uh, the sidewalk is going to be placed at the level of the road, not up where the asphalt sidewalk is today. So once we put the sidewalk in down at road grade, we would grade back until we meet the uh, current grade of your property. So when you look at the display board uh, for where your house is, that red dashed line, that's where the grading would tie in. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Uh, we're gonna return back to um, Charles Buxton. Mr. Buxton, if you can unmute your mic. Mr. Buxton, I see your mic is unmuted, but it doesn't seem um, any audio is coming through. If you would like to post your question um, in the chat, I'll be happy to read it once it comes in. Next, we have um, Kathleen. Hello, this is Kathleen Cox. Um, I live on Creek Crossing, have been here for, oh gosh, um, over 20 years. And, um, you know, it's been a very nice street to be on. And uh, the asphalt sidewalk is, um, or trail as it's called, has been sufficient. However, it's not been maintained consistently. Um, so moving to um, sidewalks on both would be a very kind of urban approach, if you will, to um, it's been a, a quiet, a relatively quiet street for many years. Um, and uh, I wonder, you know, I have a bunch of stuff posted there in the chat as well. Um, so I guess my my uh, the number one concern I have is um, the parking on the street. Um, what was the idea behind uh, the need for parking? I mean, I don't think that the the residents would have suggested that. 
So what was the town thinking about why they, why the town needed parking on the street? Sure. So parking has been a pretty consistent issue within, within town. And so we saw an opportunity to be able to provide parking. Um, that is something we can discuss with the residents. Um, but at this point, it seemed like uh, in, in, in our experience, in our discussions with residents before, that the on-street parking um, was, a, was a positive feature. Uh, and there was also the reason, we, also another reason why we added the parking was it seemed like there was a few residents that were parking along the street and utilizing the um, existing pedestrian asphalt path as a form of unofficial um, on-street parking. And so we felt like it would be helpful or, or good um, to add official on-street parking as a part of the project. And that's, so that's why it was added. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and I also would be happy to find the information um, about how to talk to the town um, about some of these other concerns I have. Sure, that would <laughs> so. be great. I, I, I would be Andrew Jinks, the transportation engineer. I'd be the one that you would reach out to. Andrew, this is Dave Cox, Kathleen's uh, husband. Yes. Um, question is, I know there's an existing easement that comes back from the old days when there was a trolley easement set in on Creek Crossing on the north end. And I assume that's what you're taking advantage of when you start doing these improvements, or are you going to be negotiating property value uh, compensation for folks that you are going to be taking property away from to create the easement? What's your strategy there? Are you in the county portion or the town portion? We're in the north. We're in the north side of 424, up on near Beulah Road. Oh, okay. Town. Gotcha. Town. Um, so the, that's something we're going to discuss with each property owner um, as far as the impacts uh, to their property. We'll go through during the right-of-way phase and discuss um, different types of impacts that there are and any ways that we can help that situation with the uh, property owner and the, the impacts that there are. So I assume you're going to do a survey to show the, the change of property size or lot size for those that are impacted and compensate in proportion to the valuation that yeah. exists in the market today, which is quite high? Or what's your strategy there? Yeah, so if that's something that, that, that you're requesting, then that's something we can look into. Absolutely. And um, the other part of that question is we have uh, fairly mature trees in the front um, that I, actually the town put in uh, when they put the asphalt path through there. Okay. Um, we also have... A, a variety of other things that are going on in the front of our property, like like some of the other residents here. Um, I assume that if you tear down those trees to put in your your uh, your your sidewalk and parking, that you're going to replant trees, or are you going to just leave the property vacant from that point forward? Uh, you're talking about in general or a specific property? Um, our specific property, I think many others along the way. If you're going to take down trees, I assume you're going to want to put another trees back because you're uh, you know you're taking away existing um, I guess, value to the property through the, the, the trees that have been growing there for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's something that we can talk about um, during the right away phase. We can discuss, you know, that type of um, mitigation with, with each property owner, um, if that's something that they would like to um, uh, seek in this process. Okay, one other question related to this. Uh, there was quite a debate going on in this side of town about the buses. Mm -hmm. that actually turn on East Street now and, and uh, don't come all the way up to the Beulah Road um, area. Uh -huh. Is the strategy to continue the bus routing as it's laid out or are you, continue, are you thinking about uh, having the buses go straight through to Beulah Road up Creek Crossing? Uh, I'll turn to the county for that one. Is, do you have any idea? Um, this, this project doesn't alter any existing bus routes. Uh, so whatever is out there today will stay just like it is now. Okay. Um, Cox family, I see that you guys have uh, several questions in the chat. Were you, did you want to ask them now or um, have them read or how would you like that? Um, either way, whatever makes sense for you. I think we covered some of those already in this discussion. But okay. I'd love to have one of your whoever's doing the assessment, come out and visit us at the property so we can walk through it. Um, and I think there are other residents here on this side of the street are willing to have that discussion as well, since you're gonna be putting parking in front of our, our property, as well as another sidewalk that doesn't exist. So it's gonna have a major impact on the frontage of the properties. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of hardscape um, from, you know, from what it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 
you know, one of the questions that is just kind of an obvious one is like, what, what, what provided the impetus to do this much hardscape on this road at this time? Now, granted, this time means 2023. But um, was there a particular goal in mind as to why it needed to be, other than, you know, the drainage, um, you know, was there a future intent um, that, a, a purpose that this improvement was meant to serve? Right, it's just to really provide the full um, capability of connectivity for pedestrians through creek crossing, which would mean sidewalks on both sides. But again, we're, we're at 30% design, and, and that's why we're coming here to the residents to, to get this type of feedback. So there is some flexibility within the design that we can discuss um, once we hear really all the different comments that, that uh, are provided tonight and over the next two weeks. Um, and then we can continue that conversation, you know, throughout the design process. Sure, just to, just to add on to that, there, if you uh, were, you know, to do a traffic engineering study of, of people, of pedestrians, uh, the equivalent of it for pedestrian traffic, you would see that there probably is a demand for one sidewalk, but not so sure about two. And, um, you know, one sidewalk, the path currently supports, more than supports the traffic on Creek Crossing, at least at our end of the road. Um, so you may be able to save some money in your budgeting just by having it on one side with parking. But that's just a suggestion to... Sure, really that's a that's a great comment. Topic. Please please make sure that that's that's included in your official comment um, um, that's submitted to us. Sure. Thank you. Oh, I I just want to jump in for one second because the the county's portion of this project, the the tree issue that was just discussed, might be a little bit different than the way the town handles that. Uh, for the county portion, this is all going to be within. The, well, the vast majority of this work is going to be within the VDOT right away. So we, if there was a tree that needs to come down, we would not be replacing it because VDOT does not allow us to replant within the right of way. If it's a tree that's on your property, we're going to compensate you for that tree and you can use that money to replant uh, as you see fit. But I don't want, for, for the county section, we cannot replant within the right of way for this project. Thank you, Mark, for clarifying that. Our next question is a uh, written question from Julia. Um, there seems to be a gap between the Vienna map and the Fairfax County map in the area from Foxstone Drive to approximately Miller Lane. Is there a plan to build out sidewalks on both sides of the road there, particularly between the bus stops at Avis Court and the nearby Ridge Lane? Uh, uh, there's no, there's currently no safe way to walk from Ridge Lane to the bus stop and school bus stop. Uh, it's a very good observation and good question. Um, Adam, uh, could, could you confirm, I had thought that there was sidewalk in that gap area on both sides. Is that not the case? There, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Um, there is sidewalk for some of those sections. I think the candidate would be best served to answer this person's question uh, after going back to the capital projects and planning. Um, this, this area is not included within the limits of the scope of this project. It is a valid question. I would put it in the comment response period so that it can be addressed to the, the property owner. Uh, I think that is something the county would need to consider for a future potential project. Mark can elaborate more on that process than I can. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, for I, I didn't catch those limits, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not familiar with that section of the road. If there is uh, the potential for a new project in that area, if if you could email us those limits, and we'll add it to our future project list for consideration for future funding. Um, we have a question from Zach. Um, why is it necessary to have sidewalks on both sides as, uh, as sidewalks on the north side have been more than adequate for all these years? Also, what we have significant problem with speeding on our road now, is there any plan to control the speed now, uh, now that the road is going to be much wider between East and Beulah? So as I mentioned before, we we're really looking for the, um, the best situation when it comes to pedestrians, and that would be 
sidewalks on both on both sides. And so that aspect, um, at least in the town's portion, can be discussed. And we can um, review that aspect um, based on the comments that we receive uh, over the next two weeks. Um, and as far as the speeds, there currently is um, no, uh, no plans for part of this project to add any type of traffic calming. Um, but I would think that with introduction to official parking and you all park cars on one side of the roadway, that that should help mitigate some of the speeds. Um, parking on, on, on street parking in general is technically a traffic calming measure. Um, so that may help with the speeding. I, I was really not fully aware that there was a major speeding issue here. Um, but if there is, then please provide that into the comment section and we can look into that. Um, we have, we're gonna try uh, Mr. Buxton again. Mr. Buxton, can you give us a, um, a hello? I hear some type of audio coming from your end. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buxton, I would recommend um, exiting the meeting and um, joining back in, that might fix your audio issue. Um, and I'll be keeping an eye out for you when you return. Um, right now we have uh, Julia. Uh, yes, hello. I would like to address the question. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, that I submitted in writing about the section between Parkstone and Miller Road. It's a very unsafe area with bu a bus stop and school bus stop and where children frequently just use this unsafe area to cross the street without even taking um, effort to cross on the other side of the street. It's just place to that call for calls for some accidents and I'm just I just don't understand why it was not included in this project uh, could you please give me the reason why this specific section there's absolutely no connectivity if the plan was to provide the connectivity between Beulah and um, the whole section of the creek cross and then this section is definitely totally excluded, which it, this section being the most unsafe area in this whole uh, project. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that reason for you. Uh, our project limits are established uh, by our planning team and our pedestrian team in advance of when it gets turned over to the design side. So due to the circumstances here, typically we would have a representative from them at, with us for these meetings, but with our uh, limited amount of people we can have here. We didn't bring them tonight. Um, if you send us, um, send Andrew uh, that comment in writing with your email address and we'll respond back to you directly and we'll give you a, a better answer on that. We submitted concerns about this section about a year ago when the total reconstruction was going on around the creek crossing without touching the creek crossing area. We submitted it to the town of Vienna, to Fairfax County, because it is a real concern for the number of residents, uh, and especially for the families with children. They not only cross this area on foot, but they also use the bikes, and this is just uh, uh, something that of all this area needs to be addressed in the first place. And this is just surprising that this was excluded specifically the small section. Uh, Mr. Elkhorn, do you have any uh, idea where we can get this information and how to make an effort uh, to include it in the current project? Because this one will be finished at the best case scenario 2023. So if we just start the process now, I've been in construction for many years, huge constructions, and we know how the uh, construction schedules go. 
So we would expect it by the end of 2030, if if it take if it's taken into consideration at all. Yeah, Julia, thank you for your question. I don't have any background information as to why this segment was not included, uh, but I'm happy to look into it. Could you please do that and give us a feedback? That will be greatly appreciated, not only by me, but we signed the letter. There was a number of residents who submitted the letter to Mr. I think it was Mr. Welsh, well, uh, at the time at Fairfax County, who was responsible for the ongoing project. Okay, so how yep, do we connect? Uh, I, I, will there be information or how do we get in touch so that we can follow up on that? Uh, the best thing to do is to probably call my office uh, okay. at 703-478-0283. Okay. That's the best way. And will we be connected somehow or I will just let them know to give the questions to you or yeah and actually it's you'll probably usually end up difficult talking. to get through as you'll you know probably, you'll probably end up uh hearing from shamley Houth, and shamley i believe is still on this uh as well uh the call so uh we'll get back in touch with you and we can thank communicate you. by phone or email i appreciate that welcome thank you Um, we have another question from Ken, it looks like. Yes, this is really a comment for Supervisor Alcorn. Uh, the Coxes and uh, one or two other folks mentioned the bus route that runs through, and this is slightly tangential, but I'm going to press my case because I got an opportunity. Before that bus started running, there were your predecessor held a meeting or two um, to discuss this, there were a lot of residents who did not want that bus running through. It, we got run over, the bus runs through Creek Crossing down East Street, 123 back to Spring Hill Metro. Um, I have asked for statistics from the County Transportation Department. And the uh, last time I asked was about a year ago. And there was absolutely minimal, at least in my area of the route, minimal use of that bus three times in the morning, three times in the afternoon. If you're looking for any kind of way to save money for the county, I would highly recommend you look into those statistics. They, they track how many people get on and off at each one of those bus stops. And I can tell you in my area where I see two different stops, nobody uses that. If, if there are underserved people in the area, it would be much more effective to let them you Ubers and uh, compensate them for that rather than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for buses that are not used. I just wanted to make that comment and recommendation to you. Thank you, Ken. Sure. Uh, and we are going to try Mr. Buxton one more time. There might be a different audio. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you. This is regarding 517 Creek Crossing Road. The house was built in 1960 when there was a single lane bridge over the creek. Approximately 10 years later, a right-of-way was claimed and a large cut was made, leaving a steep, unsightly embankment uh, as the approach to the bridge was developed. Is, uh, is there still going to be a steep embankment or will there be a grading of the front yard? How much more are you planning to take from this property in addition to what was taken 50 years ago. You're talking about 517 Creek Crossing Road? That is correct. Uh, so currently we're not showing any um, permanent right-of-way impacts. There's just a temporary construction easement 
proposed. So we would not be taking anything additional there. Okay, then uh, at that point, uh, what you're taking is on the other side of the street? Well, actually in that area, the right of way is a bit wider, so there's not an impact to 501 um, uh, Creek Crossing Road. 517. Well, 517. You, that's right, but yeah. you, you're mentioning the other side of the roadway. Okay. But no, there's no impact uh, uh, for, uh, on the other side of the roadway. So is there just going to be a sidewalk in front of that, that steep embankment now? Uh, yes, there's proposed sidewalk along both sides of the roadway, so yes. Okay, uh, a <laughs> tangential question. I have a voluminous amount of leaves that are raked and put down over that embankment. And uh, if that remains the same with, with a sidewalk, where am I going to put my leaves? Because I don't think the, the leaf picker up or truck is going to come up the embankment. <laughs> well, so you're talking about the, the town's leaf collection? Yes. So, yeah, and this isn't uh, my expertise, but I believe that um, the, the residents gather their leaves on the side of the roadway and then the truck comes by on the road to, to suck them up. Um, so that would not change. It would just be simply putting the leaves on the side of the road where our crew can come through and remove the leaves. Well, with, it's already steep there. And I would, so do I put them between the embankment and the sidewalk or between the sidewalk and the, uh, and the road? Uh, it would end up going into like the, the curb area, the curb and gutter area where we see it in other locations in town where residents put it right, just right there on the side of the road um, uh, within town. Okay, okay so I, I rake up to the embankment and then I, I kind of have to hurl them over and then I have to come down onto the sidewalk and then rake them off the sidewalk onto the other side of the sidewalk near the street. Is that it? Yes, I believe so. Again, I'd have to talk to our, our leaf crew, but yes, I believe that that would be the case. That, okay. You know, that, that's a, actually a great right. comment, and I want to get back to you on that, so please make sure you submit that as a comment so that I can officially get back to you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Kathleen. Yeah, hi, this is Dave Cox. Uh, just an observation. <clears throat> um, if you walk down the McAdam path, the, the dirt uh, that's down on the north side of the street, you will note that the path is actually dotted with a lot of water meters. And, and so right in the middle of where you're putting your sidewalk and parking, uh, quite a few uh, water meters are gonna be on that side. So if you've done your survey, you probably know this, but um, I take into account that you're gonna be moving a lot of meters that the town uses to read for water purposes um, on the north side of the, of the street. And you probably have an equivalent number that I've not walked. Nobody walks on the south side right now on our end um, that you're going to have to deal with as well. So hopefully you, uh, in your engineering assessment, are taking into account the fact that utilities on the north side of, of uh, near, near Beulah are very old. Um, they've been here since the 30s and 40s, and sewer systems, water systems. And uh, you may have some unforeseen engineering uh, issues to deal with. Just a comment. Sure, yeah, no, we've, in our boards, we actually show um, where those meters are. And so that is something that we're gonna have to assess as we continue on with the final design. But thanks, very good observation. Um, I don't have any further questions um, right now. Oh, uh, Mr. Robinson. Yes, I just want to have a comment that someone else has raised uh, re relative to the existing asphalt pathway. It is my experience when we walk our dogs that, that people, lots of people park, use that asphalt pathway as essentially a parking lot and force us onto the street to dodge cars with dogs at hand. So I am very encouraged that the, uh, the asphalt and I was told, by the way, that they, because it's an asphalt pathway and not a parking lot, it's perfectly legal to park your cars 
on on the pathway. So, uh, people were perfectly legal to do to do that. So I'm very encouraged that you're going to eliminate that that uh, uh, asphalt pathway and replace it with a legitimate uh, legitimate sidewalk. I'm just as as conversations continue to unfold here, I'm I'm hopeful that at the end of the day we will end up with the sidewalk replacing just on the one side of the street replacing the asphalt rather than digging up uh, all, all on the other side of the street too. So we'll, we'll we'll have that conversation going forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your comment. Uh, there are no hands raised, and I don't see any new questions in the chat, uh, okay. but I will leave this up. Could this you go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint? There's a few more things we need to cover. Sure. And next slide. Okay, so thank you very much for, for bearing with us through that, and uh, we really do appreciate all your comments. And the next steps will be to evaluate your comments and see what, what type of um, modifications we can make to uh, the proposed design. Um, so really getting those comments in within the next two weeks would be really helpful for us as we go through to the next uh, phase of design where we'll be submitting right-of-way plans and um, developing that very critical project estimate, which will help us in figuring out what type of um, or how much additional funding we'll need for the construction portion of this. And then we'll be able to proceed on to the final plans once we have everything verified. Next step, or next slide. Okay, so ways to comment. Um, there's a few ways to do this. First, you can send me a direct email um, with your comments. My email is is uh, on your screen right now. And then also on the project website, um, there's a link to my email. And one thing I wanted to mention was that um, there's an easy way to get to the project website. If you just go to Google or whatever search engine uh, you use and type in Creek Crossing Sidewalk Improvements, it'll be probably the first or second link um, in the search results that, and that will take you, that link will take you to the project website. Um, just to give you an easy way of, of finding and locating the project website. And on the project website, there'll also be a link to download the official comment um, sheet that you can either print and um, bring it into town hall, the DPW desk, and hand it to me, or you can print it off and scan it and email it to me, or you can um, simply put it in the mail um, put a stamp on it, please, of course, and uh, mail it to us through the standard or regular mail. Um, so there's a various uh, options. Very, there's there's a few different ways to be able to comment. Um, any way that works out for you and, this, and that is convenient for you um, will work. And again, we'd like to have those in two weeks by two weeks from now, so by December 16th. And that's really all I have at this point. I really want to thank you for your interest in the project and attending um, virtually this evening and staying safe. And I wish you all the best and happy holidays and take care and thank you very much. Was there another question? Before, thank you, Andrew. Before we um, exit out, everyone who submitted a question or comment in the chat today will be submitted to Andrew as well. Yes, so let you know. yes. So this, this meeting was recorded and um, a link to the meeting if you want to watch it or send it to a neighbor uh, will be available on the project website probably a couple of days from now, once we get it all um, um, get it all loaded up, uh, it will be available to view. I think it's a YouTube link, so it'll be on YouTube. And uh, we will keep the questions and log the questions that were submitted on the chat box as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate everyone attending. Thank you, Supervisor, for attending. Appreciate it.